This is a new snake. So, um, I think something might be wrong with that bobcat. Today, I'm heading into Phoenix to go to an area within our study site that we have been tagging rattlesnakes for seven years now to go see who is still around and see if we can meet some of our old friends out there. We've been doing this study so long that some of the snakes that are now adults were not born in the first year of the study. So it's interesting to watch how the place changes. I think we're gonna see a lot of cool stuff tonight. I don't think we're gonna see a lot of females sitting out. Uh, probably not gonna see any babies, but on a night like tonight, I'm still thinking that we're gonna see some good numbers. So it's very hot, uh, the moon is very bright, but I know this area really well, so I don't, uh, don't really see a chance of failure entirely, so we'll see. Uh, this particular spot is pretty well known by a lot of herpers, and how much it gets visited comes and goes. That's been one of the really interesting things about this project, is not just learning about how snakes use an area um, and the urban impact of it. I thought that development would be a much greater detriment to the animals here, but what we've learned from this site and another few that are like it that get really, really often visited by people like me, by herpers, is that when that's not done right, it can really have a huge impact on the animals. And that's what happens here in this place. Uh, too many people, too often. So if you have an ambush predator that's sitting out hoping for a meal to come through and uh, every single night of its life it gets scared in and has to be chased away from the places that it uh, thinks is the best place to succeed, then it's gonna move or it's gonna fail. And it's hard to live out here. They don't have a lot of room for either of those things. So what we see is a big drop in sight fidelity, how often an animal uses a particular place or just the general abundance of animals in those locations that get hit really hard by herbers compared to similar canyons that are pretty much off the radar. So it's kind of an unfortunate thing. And uh, I'm always just kind of disappointed that when this is brought up to the greater herping community, um, it doesn't go very well. There's not a lot of room for introspection. And ultimately what suffers are the animals. So it's kind of a bummer, but all you can do is focus on what you're doing in my case, that is to go collect some data. So, you know, if people don't want to just listen to reason, maybe they'll listen to data. It might be just a little early. I see a tiger rattlesnake way in the back, just barely starting to come out. So I'm going to go over here and get some information. I hope it comes out. Okay, he's not going to come out of there. I just looked. So I'm just going to hang out in there. Also, I was wrong. It was a speckled rattlesnake when I actually could see it a little better. It's way in the back. So I'm going to keep going, but it's a good indication. Maybe I'm a little bit early. I'm going to take my time before getting to some of the other known estivation sites. I'm seeing a lot of rodent activity, and some good news is that the uh, temperature has dropped. It is uh, 99 degrees right now, which makes it the coolest evening in uh, a while. And also high humidity. So I think... It's getting all the snakes excited to be out. And no matter, you know, maybe even some of the gravid females are going to be sitting out. It's hard to not hang out on a nice evening like this. And there's a tiger rattlesnake. I'm going to go grab it so I can get some information about it. Come here, tiger rattlesnake. You're going to come with me. We're going to see if we know you or not. Thank you. One of the best tools I have for this kind of thing is a hat. You can put the hat over the snake, you get your, your stuff out so it's not crawling around and trying to escape while you're just trying to get your gear. And we know this snake. Cool. I haven't been here for a while, so this would have been a, at least a couple of years since I've been here and seen this animal. Since it is a recapture, I'm not going to remeasure it or anything. I'm not gonna put it in a tube. I do wanna get a photograph of it though. 
So we'll do that much and then I'll get the other information. Maybe I'll get its tail count or something like that. But I'm gonna try to minimize stress as much as we can because this is already stressful. I'll just let it go do its thing. Got everything we need and I'll get the rest of the information here. Okay, there's a big diamond bag right there. Okay, I'm gonna do an advanced mode over here called throw the hat over the snake before it moves. Hopefully it stays put and then you can tag it, or not tag it, but read its tag if it has one without having to put it in a tube first because tubing a big hot diamond back isn't like the most fun. All right, look at that. Look at that technique. <laughs> what a stupid skill to learn in your life, huh? That's why I have this loop here, because I can go like this and lay it on there. Do I know you? Are you a new snake? Looks like it. Oh shit. Okay, so I'm gonna tube this animal. It's under the hat. All right, next stop is getting a snake into a tube. The snake just wants to escape. So we're gonna try to give it an opportunity to, but into the tube. Cause that looks like the way to escape, right? Certainly. Of course it is. Gotcha. Snake in a tube. All right, now I have access to it and I can do all the stuff I need to do. Snake is not able to turn around in here. This is a pretty large diamond bag, big male. Just to be sure that I didn't miss something. This is a new snake. Never tagged by us before. Should I get a picture of that tail? There. Pit tag. That is the only bummer about doing this. I don't, I don't get to see as many animals in a night. Because, you know, where we used to, I used to go out and see like 30 animals in a night. And now um, it takes some time to do this each time. So I don't get, you know, you just run out of time. Okay, tube. Make sure that's working. Tag is there. Go ahead, go ahead and get out of here, guy. And he's done. And if we see him again, we'll know it. Hello. You still see it? No. No? Okay. Okay. This one? At least that's the last time we saw it here. Right here. Okay. It went in this bush? Yep. Okay. And it went underneath inside of it? Yeah. Okay. I'm just walking around to just make sure they're... He didn't, he isn't laughing at me as I dig in the bush. Uh, like usually you can turn them around. Um, if they, if they tuck into something and they think that they're doing a good job at hiding, generally they won't rattle. Oh, here it is. Where? This side, this side, this side. On this. Oh, okay. Oh my God, you got Good job. <laughs> good job. Okay. Oh <laughs> you guys want to see it? No. no? You're like, I've been watching it for the past hour. <laughs> All right, into the darkness I go. Look at that. Probably couldn't see that, but there's a coyote. Keeps stopping and looking back at me. I don't know if you can see that. Keep looking back to see if homeboy is following me. They do that sometimes. I don't know if you remember that one episode when uh, 
a fox followed me and I had to go to a different spot because he kept wanting the rattlesnake in my bucket. Like he, he was so entranced by the by the sound that it followed me and it got real close. Like it was almost unnerving how close it was. So I had to leave and go find a new spot because I didn't want him to steal my snake right after I let it go. So but that ended up well. So the snake they had told me was drinking from the pool in the evening. And I was kind of across town. Everybody's hands were tied. And so I, I ran across town to grab this guy. And in the, in the time that I was there, it had gotten its drink from the pool, gone along the side yard, went underneath the gate or through the drain. I can't remember which one it was. And then found itself in the front yard. I, very thankful that they were willing to watch the snake for that long because it was tucked way underneath that bush and it would have been fairly difficult to find it. Whoa, hi. <laughs> it didn't even, didn't strike or anything. It was just looking directly at me. Hi. You got something funky going on with your eye or what? No, you're good. Gonna get you in there as far as I can. Make sure he gets deep in there so Mr. Wiley doesn't decide to make a meal out of this thing. Are you doing making bad decisions? You are making bad decisions. What's the matter with you? I told you. There's a coyote. Don't, don't, don't. Here we go. Let's help you make better decisions. All right. See you later. Look at that. Homeboy did follow me. They'll keep their distance, but they'll follow you. Yep. Okay, historically this is kind of a little hot spot for a number of reasons. One is that there's an older fella who used to uh, leave water bowls out here for snakes, so there would be quite a few here. Um, problem is, is that he unfortunately died uh, several years ago, um, and no one's been able to fill up those water bottles, those water uh, bowls. So the animals that learned to depend on them over years um, were left in kind of a bad situation because they come over here expecting that to be a resource and it's gone so where I would normally count on seeing a good number of snakes here I might see one and we have seen them in other places not doing that great so provisioning water might seem like it's a cool thing to do um, but in the long run it doesn't really help the animals uh, at, a, at a population level so we'll see if anything's here, but there might be a tiger or something here, but there used to be a lot of stuff here. She's very gravid. Look at that. Belly full of babies. I'm going to get a photo, but I'm not going to touch her. She's not going to um, go through the stress of being tubed and all that. She's going to give birth like any time. So I'm going to get a photo and move on. Look at that, that is a very pretty long-nosed snake. A lot of red on that animal for this, this area. Nice, I think I'm gonna get a photo of that animal. Don't just leave it. Another male, as expected. The females are going to be largely busy right now. The babies. Can you let me put you in a tube? You're a big.
big boy. And you got a snake in the tube. And I'm done with the snake, so he can escape. I will let him go. Up there, he can crawl out of here. Interestingly, almost everything tonight is a diamondback. I guess I didn't really get into the less diamondbacky stuff very much. There's a bobcat right in front of me watching me. You okay, dude? Are we cool? <laughs> All right, well, I'll get my shit and get out of here. I hope you weren't planning on eating our friend here, were you? So, um, I think something might be wrong with that bobcat. Um, I'm wondering if it could potentially be rabid. I know that sounds a little bit much, but um, I've run into a lot of bobcats, and this one is looking kind of sick, and it keeps its following me. So, that's not normal bobcat behavior. It's not scared of me at all. It looks kind of ill, like it's, mouth, it's hot, but its mouth is just kind of hanging agape and uh, it's following me. And I've seen lots of bobcats before. I've never had one act like this. So um, yeah, it's not normal behavior. I just, you know, it's not likely it's more likely that it's just, um, you know, just a curious animal. But yeah, it's following me. So um, I'm gonna just, just, you know, rule out the the chance here that this is an, a rabid bobcat. <laughs> it's a possibility, not common, but. Yeah, it's not acting normal, so um, I'm going to speed up a little bit here and go around a corner and just make sure it's no longer following me. And then uh, if that's the case, I'll go into a canyon and resume my hunt to another area. And if, if not, I'm going to leave and call somebody. <laughs> Fun stuff.